Welcome back, everybody, to the channel. You already know who I am, so let's just get that out of the way right now. Big Boy Variety here. And, well, week two is over. And let me tell you, um, we got injuries up the wazoo, man. I mean, come on. Drew Locke, gone. Saquon Barkley, done for the year. Um, you know, I mean, 49ers are just banged up to injury hell, man. You know, Raheem Mostert gone, Jimmy Garoppolo gone, you know. There, there, there's just so much that's going on. Who else is gone for the 49ers again? Um, Nick Bosa's gone. Yeah, yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, I mean... It, he's done for the season, actually, but you know, it, 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 it it's a lot of injury. You know, um, Michael Thomas is, didn't play tonight, so I mean, it's just injuries everywhere, everywhere. Let me tell you. And well, let's talk about the games because there were some interesting ones. Let's just get some of these other ones out the way real quick, like the 49ers just. Pretty much blowing out the Jets. I mean, Sam Darnold looked like Sam Darnold. You know, the Jets defense was absolutely horrific. Mostert ran for like a nine, for like an eighty-yard touchdown on the first play of the game, and then there was a third and thirty-one, a third and thirty-one. The 49ers got a first down off of um, Steelers Broncos. It was. You know, I, I did see this game, but again, you know, Drew Locke got hit pretty hard. You know, Steelers defense played tough. Big Ben played well. You know, Claypool caught a touchdown pass I know of. Um, you know, Pittsburgh's just looking solid again. They're looking like the Pittsburgh of old, you know, really quick. There was a duel out, you know. You know, Tennessee and Jacksonville had a duel. Gardner Minshew versus Ryan Tannehill. It was certainly a duel. Great game. Titans came away with the W at the end. But, you know, like, yeah, it really didn't even. Derrick Henry was basically like a non factor in this game. Like, I don't think it, I don't think anybody, you know, if you had your fantasy teams out, um, I don't know how y'all did it with Derrick Henry on Sunday, but I can't imagine it. Went the greatest, let me tell you. Um, Ravens made quick and easy work of the Texans. Um, I mean, what else can you say? You know, you let you let Marcus Peters get you know an interception. The offensive line is still bad. The receivers are dropping, dropping you know easy catches that should be catches over the middle, and Deshaun Watson has to run for his life. It's the same old stuff each and every week. But, you know, now, next week, there's going to be a big, big matchup on Monday night. It's going to be huge on Monday night for the Ravens and for another team that we'll talk about in a moment here. Packers, pretty much, you know, same old, same old. They they did what they needed to do with the Lions. Now, the Lions had the lead early on, but... You know, Aaron Rodgers and that Packers offense has just been too strong. I don't know what in the world is going on the past two weeks, but, you know, they put up 40 points in each game the past two weeks. You know what I mean? Um, Bears beat the Giants, but, I mean, it's really no – it's really just not much to talk about because, I mean, I didn't see this game. Let me tell you, first off, Got to cut down on those turnovers, Giants. Got to cut down on those turnovers. You can't let Daniel Jones throw all these interceptions and get all these fumbles. But, yeah, Trubisky had a fumble, too. Or it wasn't an interception. It was either that or something else. I don't, I don't remember because I didn't watch the game. I was looking at some highlights earlier. But, yeah, the Giants are 0-2 already. So And the Bears, surprisingly enough, are 2-0. Surprisingly enough, 2-0. Very, very shocked. Um, going up here, got an article on the side. Next day, 
um, Bills, you know, you know, give Ryan Fitzpatrick a little bit of credit. He kept, he kept, the, he kept the Dolphins in it. But I mean, you know, Josh Allen was just, just too much. You know, just just a little bit too much. Josh Allen. Oh Lord, what about the Eagles? What about them Eagles? What about them Eagles? Let me tell you. Jared Goff, three touchdown passes. Tyler Higby caught, I think, you know what? Higby might have caught all three touchdown passes. I can't remember. But, you know, the Eagles just got dominated again. Not a good look. Not a good look out there in Philly. It was all Goff, which is very surprising. All all golf, all the time out there. You know, Robert Woods got a touchdown off at the end of the round, of course. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think th- there's something wrong in Philly. I mean, I know there's injuries, but it, and I know we haven't played the preseason. I know everybody's going to pl- blame the preseason, even though the preseason shouldn't exist. We all know that. But. You know, something's going on in Philly. Something's going on. Something's not gelling well with the Eagles organization right now. And, you know, I feel like this has been, you know, a trending slope downward ever since that Super Bowl victory, which was honestly, it was crazy that they even got there in the first place. It was still, it's still crazy to this day that the Eagles actually have a Super Bowl under their belts. And as far as Sunday night goes, really great game. Cam Newton and Russell Wilson went off on a tear, you know. Russell Wilson threw four touchdown passes. Golly, man. Wilson's looking, I mean, Russell Wilson, you know, Chris Collinsworth said on the UBC broadcast that, I mean, Russell Wilson probably should have won at MVP award already, and I am inclined to agree. He really should have an MVP award already as that last stop. You know, it. I don't know how these games always end up, you know, this this tight and this close between these two teams. But all it took at the very end of the game to stop the Patriots was a goal line stop because they, they, because they lined up in that heavy package. You know, the Patriots lined up in that heavy package that they were hitting. Um, Seahawks with a couple times that night and you know just flip Cam right up on his head boom and as far as Monday night goes you know Drew Brees didn't play the best again which is not really surprising but then again, again like I said earlier they didn't have Michael Thomas but the but the Raiders the Raiders baby uh, the Gruden Grinders you know they got the big W at home in Las Vegas on the 50th anniversary of Monday Night Football, man. Crazy, crazy time, you know, for that. And on Thursday night, I don't want to forget Thursday night because I forgot about the Browns last week, but the Browns, you know, they did well against the Bengals. You know, sometimes it was just, it was just crazy to think, you know, this is what the Browns should be looking like with all that talent. You know, Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham, two great wide receivers. You know, they got a whole lot of backs in the backfield. You know, Nick Chubb especially. And Baker Mayfield, looked, he looked nice on Thursday night. He looked nice. Joe Burrow, he, he did well. He did well. But you shouldn't be throwing 60 passes to try and ensure yourself a victory. You should not be throwing 60 passes in a game. That That's asinine. And as far as, speaking of, you know, you know, rookie quarterbacks and stuff like that, let's talk about Justin Herbert, who subbed in for Tyrod Taylor because his chest hurts. My chest, his chest hurted. So Tyrod didn't get to play. And it was up to Justin Herbert to get the job done. And he, I got to say, he did well enough the, the the Chargers defense, you know, held Mahomes in check for most of that game, but as long as Harrison Butler's there, you already know it's gonna be automatic. We got an overtime game, and you know, 
was the best game for the longest time, but we got we we had something and it got really interesting once Mahomes was able to, you know, get his team back into it. Once the defense was able to keep, you know, the Chargers from scoring any more points, that would be devastating, you know. It it was an easy contender for, you know, a good game. Cardinals what can I say about the Cardinals that hasn't already been said? It is astounding, and especially with that seventh playoff spot opening up. Could we see all four NFC West teams in the playoffs? It's a possibility. It's a possibility we might see all four NFC teams, NFC West teams in the playoffs anyway. It is a big, big possibility that we could see that. Crazy think that just dominated Washington just dominate him I mean what else can you say I mean I mean he's got two Kyler Murray's got two wide receivers that are just two of the best you know a long, a long time legend Larry Fitzgerald and now you know DeAndre Hopkins I mean he's gonna have a ball this year Kyler Murray's gonna have a ball and there's gonna be some classic matchups later on season if the Cardinals keep this momentum up. Sure, you know, it was against Washington, but they stunned San Francisco in week one. They stunned them. They got them. And, you know, the Panthers, as far as the Panthers go, um, I think CMC got injured. I'm not sure. I can't really remember. I think he did get injured, actually. But, um, the Bucks got their first win. I mean, it's still going to take some time for Brady and company to get it together. But, you know, first win of the season, that's, that's always a good sign, right? Right? Right. And then, you know, the Vikings taking on those Indianapolis Colts. I mean, Phillip Rivers didn't even have to do much. He still, I think he still threw a pick. I can't remember exactly. So, again, I was watching the highlights of this game. This is not the game that I was watching. It was like a 10 games on at, at noon. And um, I was only watching one game at that time. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But uh, Kirk Cousins, what happened, man? Three interceptions. Three. Let a safety happen. What in the world happened, man? What's going on out there? What's going on there, Viking Nation? I mean, I'm gonna have to eventually watch a Vikings game, but um, not a good look right there. Not a good look at all, you know. And last, but certainly not least, we have my Dallas Cowboys taking on the Atlanta Falcons with limited fans in attendance. Um, not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Defense looked awful. I don't care, you know, that I don't care what happened in the second half, which I'll talk about. Defense looked atrocious. Offense started very slow. Matt Ryan was throwing, he was throwing bombs. He was throwing, you know, he was just making that Atlanta Falcons offense click. And then I don't know what in the world happened in the second half. Like, Atlanta blew another lead of 20 points or more again. How do you do this? You just allow Dak Prescott to run for three touchdowns. You know, you can't do that. You definitely can't do that with a guy that can, that can run the football. You can't do that at all. I mean, sure, the Dallas offense had two or three fumbles that were recovered by Atlanta early on in the game, but you can't you can't let up. You gotta keep beating you gotta keep beating the team down. And you can you especially can't just sit there and, and just freeze up when an onside kick is happening. How do you freeze up when an onside kick try and box a Cowboys player out just just doing this? What are you doing? I forget which player that was on the Falcons, but what are you, what is this? What are you trying to do? Why are you boxing out and not, you know, trying to recover the onside kick? 
they just the Falcons just let that sit there for ten yards. They they just huddled around it like it was some sort of prayer circle and just let the ball bounce for ten yards and then bubble away. Our boy now, Greg the Leg Zerline, got the game winner. But um, next week is going to be rough, let me tell you, because um, the Seahawks, we're going up to uh, Seattle, and um, it's not going to look pretty if Russell Wilson continues to play the way he's been playing, and our defense doesn't get it together, and our offense doesn't get it together. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, week two, full of injury. An amazing comeback and some good, you know, some good quality games. We finally got some good quality games for the first time, you know, in a long time. You know, we had some goodies, especially that Sunday night game. That Sunday night game was absolutely great. You know, just another example of, you know, of, you know, that, that Patriots Seahawks. That, that's become a rivalry in the last couple of years in, sub, in some ways because of how tense and how tight the games have been. Just a damn good game. We're, I mean, we have a couple of doozies for next week as well, and I'm so excited for that. So look out tomorrow sometime, you know, for, you know, the week three preview because it's going to be an interesting slate of games once again. And for that, you know, you already know what I'm about to say. Like, share, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Continue to watch my other videos, of course. And y'all have a good night. Thank y'all.